Right, I'm starting to record. I'm recording. Yes, thanks, go ahead. Right, good evening, boys and girls. We meet again tonight to continue with our lesson in terms of civil drawing. Basically so far, we have looked at the plan, which is the top view. Right, and we have also looked at the section. So today's lesson would focus mainly on the issue of the elevation. And like I said last time, we are looking basically at the 2018 paper. So if we are done with that, we can also continue to look at the 2019. So I'm hoping that you are following whatever we are doing and these lessons have been helpful to you. So without wasting a lot of time, I want us to look at the scope, what we are going to do with regards to today's lessons. Like I said already, we are going to focus mainly on the Western elevation with regards to the question that we have today. Right, in particular, we are going to look at the roof. We are going to look at the presentation of the rainwater downpipe on the elevation. We are also going to look at how to present the door. And in this, uh, in this case, we are going to look at the sliding door. Then we also need to look at the window details how we present those ones on an elevation. Not forgetting the issue of labels, because some of you, you tend to forget this, but these are marks that you should not throw away. So I want you to pay special attention today as we conclude the last leg in terms of question number four. Right, thank you so much. And I want you to uh, pay attention as we go through this together. Please, where you have got questions, where you have got issues, next time when we meet, I want you to let me know so that we can iron out all those issues that you want assistance on. Thank you. Right, like I said, we have looked at the floor plan, we have looked at the section, right, today's focus is on the elevation. So I'm going to go straight into the paper in terms of the, our information paper and just to see that, what, that which we have done so far. Like I said, we did the floor plan, right, by inserting the following features like your doors and your windows. The fixtures is indicated by the abbreviations. The electrical fittings is indicated by the numbers or the hatching details. Right, we skipped this part, which is our focus today. We are, and we looked at the detailed section, right, with regards to the foundations and the walls for the veranda, the door detail, the roof detail, including the fascia board, the gutter, and the batch board. For hatching detail, like I said, if we are looking at the substructure, as I explained, right, you may hatch that part using free hands. Also did some labels according to the requirements of the questions. So today we are going to look at this. Once we have done that, we would have touched the full question in terms of question number four. And it's my hope that at the end of this lesson, when you get hold of question number four, don't hesitate to respond to the questions which are there, okay? And right, let's go straight into that question, okay? 
Right, if you look at the information again, let me just bring this one back. Right, you have got this is the incomplete elevation. So we want to draw this. As you can see, the elevation is in relation to, to the top view. Right, we are not going to really use the section in terms of projection simply because the two elevations or the three elevations, they basically make use of a different scale. You'd find that in terms of the uh, section, we use the one is to 20, but if we come now to the elevation, we are going to use one is to 50, the same scale that is used for, for the floor plan. So I want you to pay attention today so that you understand exactly how to go about it. Right, the first thing that you need to do right you have got this is the profile of the wall this side and that is the wall as well right if we are to go to the rubric we go this side right you'd find that in terms of the western elevation you have one pipe we shall look into that in detail we have got walls the finished floor level and the step all those maps we need to look at in order to answer that question with regards to the waste elevation. So follow me as we go through this so that whatever information and techniques that I am going to expose to you, you should be able to apply these on your own in a, an exam setup. And like I said, you need to express confidence, you need to be precise, you need to show that you know what you are doing, okay? Right, I'm going to draw a line from here in terms of the wall, take it up like that. Right, do the same on the right hand side, you do the same, project a line like that. So this is where we the measurements which are given and the information that is given as well right line from here to there we have got a height of 4075 right it may not be it might not use a scale rule for that so i'll do this the calculation way 4075 divided by 50 this is the height from the ground to the ridge line, okay? So I'm going to measure 81.5. See, I don't have the starting point. So what I'm going to do is, right, check, okay? I want to fit 81.5, right? So I'll start here. I mark a point like that, then 80, 81 and a half, which is somewhere there, okay? Right, that's where I'm going to place my diagram. So this one and that one, okay? Right, so my diagram in terms of the drawing would basically be from here to there, from this point to that point. Right, there is nothing that is going to change with regards to this line. This would symbolize the ground line. So I'm going to outline from here to there. Right, already this is a mark. Right, if you are certain, you can actually write NGL. Right, if you remember when I introduced the, 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 the lesson, I said there are labels to be defined, and this is one of them, okay? So you have got the NGL, which means it's the natural ground level, right? We have got this line, which is representing the ridge line, right? At the same time, I can project from here, right? When we were dealing with a section last time, I talked about these dotted lines to say these are representing the roof line. So I'm going to extend this up like that. And also on the right hand side, I'm going to extend this one up like that. Right, okay. 
I don't have details for now in terms of how the roof would be completed. Right, so what you need to do, you check every time, check the information that you are going to use. As you can see from the ridge line all the way to the start of the fascia board, you have got 1,100, right? That part I can basically use a scale, right, like this. Right, okay. From here, well, this is one is two. 50, okay, sorry about that. One is to 50. That's one meter, 1.1, which is that from the ridge line. Then I draw a line like that. Remember, you draw with precision every detail that you put on paper. It has to be drawn to scale. Right, if we were to check that 1.1, 1,100 divided by 50, right, we'll find that we are having 22. Let us just verify so that we see whether what we've did, what we have done is correct. Correct, this is 20 and 22. That's perfect, okay? Right, then the next thing that you want to do, right, from here in terms of the two lines that are normally put at the top, Right, I'm talking about this, right? These two lines. The beauty with civil drawing, all the information is given to you. All what you need to do is to use the approximate, appropriate scale so that you are able to represent the information as is required, okay? Right, when we were dealing with our section, okay? Just on the right here, right? We talked about this, which is the roofing material in terms of the roofing cover. And we were told that that roofing cover is 30 millimeters, okay? Right, so if we take 30 millimeters, right? 30 divided by 50, okay? You'd find that we have got 0.6 of a millimeter. Right, anything below a millimeter, you can just measure to a millimeter. It's, it's acceptable, all right? So if you can, you can still measure that 0.6, right? Or simply a millimeter like that. Then you come and draw faintly like that. We have got that information, right? Then also, if you are checking from this end, remember I showed you, right? Which is the end of the roofing material, there are two lines that you'll be able to see. And in most cases, this is the start of the fascia board. So you are going to add another one millimeter at the top to represent what you'll be able to see at the top. Let me do that. So I mark that and draw a faint line like that. Always do not start by outlining every detail that you are able to draw. Unless you are certain there's nothing that is going to change with regards to that detail. So I've done that, right. We know that from here to there, that's the roof overhang. From here to there, that is the roof overhang, okay? But if we go back to the information that is given, we have got this part. Right, we have got this part, which is our batch board, okay? And according to the information that is given, you'd find that there's a batch board from here to there. Those two lines are represented, representing a size of 75, right? From here to there, that's 75. From here to there, that's another 75. So let's look at 75 to scale and see what it would give us. Let's do the calculation again quickly. 75 divided by 50. You are talking about one and a half, okay? So we can measure that one and a half, right, from this end. One and a half. Every aspect of your drawing should be done to scale. One and a half, like that. Then I take this one up, 
right? And also take this one up like that, right? If you are looking at the information that is provided, you'd find that now I do have the batch board. Now I have the batch board as well, okay? Right, and I can even outline this information which I have from here. Right, just make sure you outline this. That is defined and from the batch board, you have got that upper line up to the batch board, right? Then you do the same here. Like that. Then this batch board should extend slightly, right? Like that, slightly there. Right, I'm talking about it should overlap slightly with regards to the roofing cover, right? From the top all the way down, right? So we come here. We can outline this, it's not going to change but we are still going to extend that part. Then we do this all the way up, right? All the way up. And like I said, we're still going to extend this, but as I've always said, you always wait from the known to the unknown, okay? There you go. We have got the start of our batch uh, fascia board. Right, let's go back and check the size of the fascia. Need to measure from here going down 200. The size of the batch board from here going downwards as well. Right? So from here to there, that's 200. Right, 200 to scale, we are using 200 divided by 50, we know we are going to get four, so I want to measure four millimeters from here to there. Then I want 300 as well, which would give me six millimeters, so I need six millimeters from here, right, like that. Let me start with the with the fascia board all the way, then the batch board like that. Remember the batch board is basically uh, 10 millimeters in terms of the thickness. So if we divide that 10 millimeters divided by 50, you'll find that the size would be way below a millimeter. So in situations like that, you simply represent the side by a line, okay? So I need to extend from here to there which is the six millimeter from here to there, which is the six millimeter as well. So I'm going to do that. This is representing the, the batch board like that. Like that. Then connect this one. I'm not going to outline at this point, right? But this one I can outline like that. Okay. Now, what I need to do now is to define the gutter. Remember, the gutter is fixed to the fascia board. Okay. The gutter is fixed to the fascia board. So, we are now going to talk about the height of the gutter. Again, you go back to the information, the gutter. The 150 is the part that would collect water from the roof and the 100 millimeters is the depth of the gutter. So, we need the 100 millimeters. If we take uh, 100 divided by 50, basically it's about two millimeters. So we need to define that two millimeters, which would come here, right? Then project it like this, right? That is the gutter whereby you will be able to see partly the, the information with regards to the fascia board. So I'm going to outline this. It's not going to change like that. Right, now the gutter is in position, okay? Right, if we look down, let me just take you down like this. 
right, you'd find something at the bottom here, right, that is the rainwater downpipe, okay? The rainwater downpipe is supposed to be connected to the gutter so that it collects water, right, from the roof, and that water, like we described in terms of uh, the section, is brought to the ground and gently reaching the ground by way of a rainwater shoe, okay? So I'm going to project, but I'm going to project this up. Right, project this faintly to reach the gutter. Right, do the same, project this faintly to reach the gutter like that, right? Now, the next thing that you would want to do, right? This is diameter 100, you can make it 200, you can make it 100, right? The ending part of the, the rainwater downpipe away from the ground. So I'm just going to make it 100 millimeter. So I have mitered that part, okay? Right, I have mitered this part. Since from here to there, it's, it's 100, so I've mitered, so I also have got 100 there. Now, I take my circle template, look for diameter 100. And let me just check if I will be able to draw a circle equivalent to that. But this one is too big, this one is too small as well. All right, in situations like this, where you don't have a circle template, you can do free and nicely, you draw a circle like this, okay? All right, that is an elevation of the front part of your rainwater downpipe. Then you take this one up, right? You take this one up all the way to the gutter, you take this one up all the way to the gutter, like that. Remember the rainwater downpipe is supposed to be fixed to, to the gutter. So you now have got just above the ground level, you have got that. At this point, you can now go back and outline the rest of your, your fascia board, right? You skip the rainwater downpipe and all the way like that, up until you reach the batch pot. Now, you have got the details with regards to the rainwater downpipe, you have got the details with regards to the gutter, you have got the details with regards to the batch board and the roofing material itself. So I want you to pay attention so that when we, you do this, right, you should be able to do it with confidence. I always emphasize on the issue of confidence, okay? Right, at this point, I can even outline this. This is about the external wall stopped by the fascia board. I do the same this side, all the way up until it is stopped by the fascia board. Slowly, in terms of our elevation, it's beginning to take shape, okay? Right, the roof and the rainwater downpipe, the gutter and the fascia board, the batch board, we have defined all that. So the next thing that we want now to factor in is the issue of the step, is the issue of the door, is the issue of the window detail as well. Now, remember yesterday when we were looking at the section, right, we needed first of all to define the position of this part, which is the lintel level. Remember the lintel is drawn at the top. So first of all, let us find the height from here to there, which is 420 plus 100, okay? Which would give us technically 520, okay? So I'm going to say 520 divided by 50, what do you get? We get 10.4, okay? So that 10.4 is the one which I require to measure, right? is the one which I require, not 10.4, just a moment, 
we have got 280, okay? So I need this measurement from here to there, right? Which is 420 minus 280, which would give me 140. 140 plus 100, which would give you 240, right? I just wanted to ascertain that the measurement which is given here, right, which is our NG uh, finished flow level is the correct one because here we are given 240, okay? So which means from the NGL to that one is 240. But there's something that we would need to alter here. As you know, that the height in terms of the step vis-a-vis -vis this height, they are not the same. The step is slightly lower. And if we check here, how low is it? Right, you find that from here to there it's 80, from here to there it's another what? It's another 80. So what it means is that we have got 160 and we have got 240. Those are the two measurements that we want to factor in. So let's start with the big one, which is 240. Right, so if we take 240 like that, divided by 50, what do you get? 4.8. I would give it to you, if you were to put it at five millimeters, it's fine, I would accept that. Right, so you can easily measure five millimeters from here. Right, measure five millimeter from here right, to get to that point. Right, then you draw a faint line, faint horizontal line all the way like that. Right, it's not an outline, it's just a construction line. Then you need to calculate 160 divided by 50. Right, you have got 3.2. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you gain. So I wouldn't mind if you measure three millimeters here, like that. This is the level of the step on the partial or on the veranda, okay? So this one, that is the step. Remember we said there's a step up as you enter the house, there's a step down as you exit the house onto the veranda or from the veranda, okay? Right, so now we have got those two heights. The next thing that we want is to measure from here going up, which is 2,100, okay? Right, that one is easy. We can use a scale rule for that. Right, 2,100. But right, measured from the finished flow level, which is that, okay? You mark a point and you draw a faint horizontal line like this, all the way like that. So we refer to the distance from here to there as the window level, okay, or the window height, right? But basically in construction terms, that's the window level, right? So now this is where the beam or the little over the veranda or the patio would be located. This is also the same height for the door. This is also the same height where we generate the height of the window going downwards. Once you have done that, you now take or project from here, right, from the beam, like this. You project all the way up, right? You may not need to do all that, right? Then you also come here, you project all the way up like that. So this is the specification for the information with regards to the veranda, okay? Right, so I'm going to outline this. I'm going to outline this from here to there. Right, and also from here to there, right? Then project the horizontal line, which is this one, like that, right? Then define this edge, which is the edge when you are coming from outside, you step up onto the veranda, then you step up into the house, right? Again, you do it, step by step. Do not rush. Of course, you need to make sure that you finish the exam, but finish properly, okay? Right? You are not supposed to just do it in order to 
seem to have completed something, make sure whatever part of the question that you have touched, you have touched with confidence and you know that you have gained marks for what you have done. Right, so from here to there, that's 2.1 plus that 100 millimeters, which means basically it's about 2.2. Right, okay. Then you can also project from here up like that. This would define the position of the window, right, like this. So we have got the position of the door, we have got the position of the window, okay? Right, I want to start now by defining the window, okay? Then we take it from there, right? What is the height of the window? The height of the window is 1,250. Right, this one is already there by projecting from the top view. So from here to there, it's 1,250. So you take your calculator or you take your, your scale and measure 1,250. Let me just verify. Yes, divided by 50, what do we get? We get 25, okay? So from the window level, we measure downwards 25 millimeters. Right, you are going to mark it there. Right, then you, it's not linked anyway, so we don't want to draw lines unnecessarily somewhere else. Right, so you have got this. Right, you would know through experience that this would not change at all. So remember, whatever you do, if you are certain, you can even outline like that. Right. Like that. Like that. Right. But that's not complete, okay? Right. If you check the information from this end to that end, 565, and the other end also 565, right, then you do this. 565 divided by 50, what do you get? 11.3, right, 11.3, I think you can just measure 11, it's fine. So I'll measure 11 this side and also go to that other side, measure 11 like that. Let me just verify. Well, this one was not 11, right, which is here and that one is 11, okay? It's very important to make sure that every measurement that you define on paper is to scale and the right measurement. Of course, we miss those point something, right? As a marker, I'll tell you now, right? You lose less than a millimeter in terms of your accuracy. Examiners would condone that. But anything above a millimeter, then it's wrong totally. So whatever measurement that you have should not deviate by more than a millimeter. Otherwise you lose all your marks. I'm not saying that make those mistakes, make mistakes of losing a millimeter or so, no. But I want you to make sure that you are able to complete your work in time and focus on the main picture in terms of your job that you are doing, okay? Right, let's check this information. Right, if you check here, all frames, are 50 millimeters thick, okay? 50 millimeters divided by 50, we would know that it's one millimeter, so we measure one millimeter like this. Then draw it all the way because we might need this information also on the door, okay? Right, so there's that information. Once you have done that, you take your set square, right, from this corner, you miter like that. From this corner, you also miter like this. But to miter is simply to square a size like this. Right? You also do the same at the bottom. You miter like that. Right? Then you draw a horizontal line. Right? You can see once you have measured 11 and a half, right? You miter backwards. Right? You do the same this side. You miter this side like that. Then you take this one down. Take this one down as well. Right, okay. Then, okay, sorry, sorry about that. Right, you take this one. 
slowly in terms of our window is taking shape, okay? Right, so we now have got this information. It's not going to change. So we can even define this outline from here to there. Right, and outline from here to there. We have a system, develop a system that you use in terms of completing your work. If you are dealing with vertical lines, you outline the vertical lines. If you are dealing with the horizontal lines, you first of all deal with all horizontal lines that are there. Do not touch a vertical line, a horizontal line, a horizontal line, a vertical line. That would confuse you, right, like this. Then you do the same like that. Now, let's study how the window would operate, okay? Right, we have got ways of showing how the window would operate in terms of how it is presented. You'd find that A, opening side, right, in terms of this point, then B, that's the hinged side, so we need something like that. Then C is the fixed panel. So this part and that part, in terms of this particular window, they are not going to open. This one would open sideways, right? And when it opens sideways like that, we refer to it as a side hand, right? If it opens by pushing, right, such that it is hinged at the top or hinged at the bottom, right? It's either it's a top hand or a bottom hand in terms of the position of the hinges. Right, so you need to understand those so that you understand what we are talking about. So in this case, right, this part is where you are going to have the window in terms of the handle, then this part is where it is fixed, okay? It's either we push it out or we pull it in this direction in terms of opening, but making sure that we are fixing in terms of closing here or opening from that part, okay? That's what it means when it says, opening signed and hinge designed, okay? Right, it's very simple, okay? Right, given, let me just sketch something. Right, given a window like this, right? You have got, we defined the inner frame like that. Right, if this is our A side, right, this is what you do. First of all, you can just miter, you get the center, you get that point here, okay? Then you connect from here to there, you connect from here to there, right? You can leave it as a solid line like that, but some would prefer to show by way of dotted lines like that. And when you see something like that, you would have represented how the window would open, okay? Right, so this one is what we refer to as a side hand, okay? Right, the side hand, if it is a top hand like this, right, you define the frame like that. Again, find the midpoint, you can do that by simply metering, right? If it is a top hand, you find the center here, then you connect this point to there, you connect this point to there, then you show by way of dotted lines or just a mere solid line. Then you go, you have got a top hand. Remember, this would be outlined, outlined, outlined like that. That's a mark, that's a mark, that's a mark, that's a mark. So I want you to do this, looking at the picture as to how the examiner would react when looking at your work. Right, okay. So I'm going to mitre either here or there. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm going to get the midpoint, so I'm going to do this faintly. I'm going to do this faintly like that, okay? Then take this project, get this point. Once I've, you have gotten this point, you connect it to the ends like this. Firstly, paint line, then you show by way of dotted lines. I prefer these ones because they define different lines and they highlight a concept like that. So you have, a, you have a concept that has been highlighted in terms of how the window would open, okay? Right, so that's how the window would, would open, right? But it's not complete. We still need to factor in the seal, right? 
Remember, if you check with regards to this information, it says 150 by 20 millimeter fiber cement seal under all windows, okay? So we need that information as well, shown on the elevation. And it's not complicated. I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you how it is done so that you are able to see. All right, you can project just outside. Right? If there is anyone's vertical line like that, just mark a point like that. Take your set square, right? It could be a 30 degree set square. You draw a line like that, right? From this particular point, remember this point is this line that I'm talking about. Then you measure from here to there 150. 150, we know what to scale, that would be. Right, we are using scale one is to 50, that will be three millimeters. So I'm going to measure three millimeters, 150 divided by 50, that's three millimeters like that. Right. Once you have measured that, then you draw a line which is perpendicular to the 30 degree, which means I'm drawing at 60 degrees. Then you measure 20, 20 to scale, right? 20 divided by 50 you get 0.4. Like I said, some of these measurements where you find that they are below millimeter, right? You can easily measure a millimeter or you can measure half a millimeter depending on which one is closer and which one you are comfortable to measure. All right, okay. So just to make sure I, it's clear for everyone, I'm, I'm going to use a millimeter, okay? I'm going to use a millimeter here. Right, then this, this millimeter, I will now take it back like that, right? And define this one, okay? What is the purpose of this one? It's just an auxiliary, okay? The auxiliary of a seal, okay? Then I project this one back. Take this one back and take this one back. You, need, you see, you would create two lines there. Those are the two lines that you'll be able to see when you are looking at the picture of a seal like this. And in most cases, when it is presented like this, it could be a brick on the edge, but because this is not a brick, it's, it's, a, it's a fiber uh, cement seal, right? Okay, so you'll be able to see an edge of that. Sorry about that. Right, so I'm going to extend this line. Extend this line and also extend this line like that. All right, then from there, I project this line all the way like that, all the way like that. Right, if you do this in an examination, the moment the examiner would touch your paper, they, he would be very happy because there is a demonstration of understanding and application. So this is the window setup, the part that would open, and also the window seal that has been defined. Boys and girls, I'm sure you are following and you are enjoying what we are doing right now. Right, the next thing that we want to define, right, is to do with the door, which is that, which in this case is basically the sliding door. So at this point, let me just take this one up. Let me take it up again. Pull this one so that we are able to see where we are projecting from. Right, you will see this edge and that edge. Okay, right. That is the position of the door. So I'm going to project up like that. Right, and also I need the midpoint. Take this one up, right? And also this one, take this one up like that. Right, so this is the extent of our door, right? Like I've explained even on the floor plan, the moment you have got an external door leading on the, to the outside or leading to the inside, right? The underside of that should be a continuous line. Okay, so I want you to have a continuous line like that, right? Whatever you would do, you may have now those hidden details or the age in terms of the finished floor level, 
But the moment you define a door on the outside, draw a solid line like that, right? Then from here, you now miter. Remember we talked about the frame? We miter this one, right? Take this one up. Then you do the same here. You also miter. You take this one up. Right. In reality, you are supposed to share the distance from here to there and from here to there, right? Right, shared either, either side of this line and that line. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use what we refer to as the rule of the thumb, okay? Right, I'm going to just fix it on one side and the error, maybe it could be there, but it's very negligible, okay? Right, so you would find that by simply expressing it on one side, right? I have defined the setup in terms of how this door would look like, okay? Right, so this is our sliding door, right? I'm now going to outline this sliding door, okay? Right, such that it would take this shape as well. So I'm going to outline from here all the way to the top, right? If you check with regards to the niche, way this door has been, it doesn't have that one or the, the bottom frame showing, right? So it's only at the top and it's from here all the way up like that. So I'm going to do the same, right? Take this one up all the way, then this other one to the frame, and this other one again to the frame, and the outside one outlined all the way like that. Let me also go back and define this one like that. Right. Then you outline horizontally, this one and you close like that there you go you now have got the frame the door frame the door itself in position what is missing basically is to define how it opens right we did that when we were completing the floor plan we have got this one right the arrow which is showing it's opening from left to to right you do the same you go to just wrap in the middle, okay? A paint line like that. Then once you have done that, just darken one end, okay? You darken one end like that. It shows that this is opening from left to right, okay? This is what you do if you don't want to waste your time in terms of the arrowhead. But let me just define it clearly here. Right, like that. So now the arrowhead is showing clearly, right? That is a map. So you get one, two, three, four, five, right? Sometimes they can even give the marks for each and every aspect, okay? Just like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All those are marks divided by two, which means it's four and nine. Remember, you don't lose the picture of what you are doing. If we go to the doors and windows, you find that it's seven and a half. So whatever in terms of your marking, I'm emphasizing your marking, you should be able to mark your own work, judge whether you have been able to get all the marks. Because if you don't do so, right, you can leave the exam with a false impression that I completed everything, I managed to do everything, whereas you did leave out certain aspects of the exam. All right, let's look at completing this, this task, this task, sorry. All right, okay. So we now have got the door in position. We now have got the step in position, okay? The next thing that we want to do is basically to define the position of the finished floor level. All right, let's start with this one. You can show by way of dotted lines like that. Right, if there is anything, you can also do the same thing here, right? Provided 
you are not going to disturb the setup, okay? Because from here, there's still also the finished flow level that has to be that has to be factored in. So now that is your finished flow flow level. Then here, right? It's just this part. It's not so much, right? In terms of of the step, okay? So you now have got the finished flow level. You can write inside here or just outside you write F, F, L. That's a mark. So you've got this one and two, right? Possibly the other thing that would make you get all the marks is also the labeling with regards to that view that you are dealing with, right? So you would come here at the bottom and write nicely. Write your right nicely. Waste elevation. Waste elevation. In some cases, you'd find that you may also need to indicate the scale that we have used, right? waste elevation which means it is drawn to scale 1 is to 50. boys and girls ladies and gentlemen right if you have done this you would have answered the question as is required okay and you will be certain that you would get all the marks the beauty of civil drawing question number four which is basically half the question paper itself is that most aspects of the question you are not even thinking about them you simply answer according to the information which is there at hand so i want you to make sure that as we conclude this uh, exercise today right then we can you have got the full understanding of what we uh, you are expected to do with regards to question number four. Right. Like I said from the onset, I'm going to look at all aspects of paper one. Okay. So now we have looked at paper one in terms of question number four. Right. The next thing of that we are going to look at right from here probably is the issue of uh, question two or question three. Question three we have looked at in terms of perspective, but we can look at the solid, we can look at the interpenetration and development, we can look at the transition piece and so forth. Right, so that you have got the full understanding in terms of how these questions can be asked. Boys and girls, Right, for today, if I were to start another activity, I don't think it will be, we'll be able to finish. So I'll leave this one for now, so that when we meet tomorrow, we look at another aspect of our discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening and good night.